This is much like the original design that Ephraim Shea developed in 1876. You'll note that it has three vertical cylinders, all connected to a drivetrain that drives each individual wheel. This is powered by a boiler which sits on the main frame. When Mr. Stone approached Lima about a, a locomotive, they indicated to him at the time that the only locomotive that was in stock was a narrow gauge locomotive. Uh, Mr. Stone, of course, required standard gauge to be operating on the conventional uh, British Columbia Railways at the time. And Lima offered to convert the narrow gauge in stock locomotive to standard gauge. And uh, as a consequence, uh, Mr. Stone went ahead with the purchase and in 1921 accepted delivery in the Satlam area for work on his, at his sawmill. It was sold and resold to a number of lumber companies within the Cowichan Valley uh, over the next few years. It, uh, it ended up in 1947 as a switch, switcher on the uh, docks at Crofton working for Osborne Bay Wharf Company Limited. In 1963, uh, the lease expired on the docks at Crofton and uh, the Shea uh, became idled. Uh, the founder of the Couch and Valley Museum, Forest Museum, which was the forerunner of the BC Forest Discovery Center, a man named Jerry Welburn became very interested in the availability of this Shea locomotive. In discussions with Hillcrest, who at that time were the owners, uh, he asked whether or not the Shea could be reconverted back to its narrow gauge origin. And so consultations were undertaken with Lima, Shea Locomotive Company in Lima. And uh, the conversion was then completed. And uh, the Shea Locomotive, the 24 ton original Shea built in 1920, began service at the Forest Discovery Center in 1967. It continued to serve every year thereafter until 1998 when, due to extensive thinning in the firebox area, it was no longer permissible to operate it and so it side -aisled, sat idle. In 2015, following a casual conversation with one of the operating engineers, a proposition, or a question rather, was posed to the board of directors at the time. What is the backup for the current steam engine that is in operation? The answer to that question was that there was no steam backup. The only backup that was afforded at the time was a gasoline-driven uh, locomotive. So the question put to the board was, how would we provide and preserve that steam excursion ride in the event that the current engine in use, which was a rod engine, uh, failed its annual inspection. After some deliberation, it was determined that in 2008, uh, that question had been visited by previous boards and determined that the boiler on the existing number one Shea uh, required total replacement at a cost of some $240,000. At that time, uh, that number was certainly beyond the financial capability of the Forest Discovery Center, and so it was abandoned. Early in 2016, the board decided that the, the question of replacement for the boiler for number one should be uh, reviewed and some uh, definitive cost structure put together to see what, in fact, was doable. Uh, from that discussion, a fundraising committee was put together and they went out into the community for help to rebuild this iconic artifact. So in May of 2016, we uh, had a press conference and announced that we were going to restore the number one Shea uh, by replacing the boiler and doing whatever uh, additional work was required. Uh, and that we were going to go out into the community and ask for help. And so in the summer of that year, a disassembly of the locomotive uh, began. So fundraising uh, in the summer of 2016 began in earnest. And uh, I can 
say without e equal that uh, it was impressive the response we got in the community. Uh, some of the major donors uh, were quick to step up the plate with significant dollars and in a comparatively short time we managed to put together uh, $140,000. At the time uh, we estimated that the uh, the, the budget for the restoration would be in the order of 125000 Over the course of the six years that we have been restoring this locomotive, we have found that we needed far in excess of that number. And in fact, if we were to total up all of the donations from the community in terms of man hours, we are easily at three quarters of a million dollars in this restoration process. A firm in Crofton named Geotech were instrumental in both designing and building the new boiler for the number one Shea. In addition, uh, when we disassembled uh, the entire locomotive, we found that uh, the truck sets in particular and those are the units that are articulated underneath the boiler and support the main frame. We found those truck sets to be in serious need of repair. The bearings were shot, the axles need to be turned, the, all of the drive wheels need to be reprofiled. And again, thanks to help in the community, all of that work was done. Uh, and uh, without incident and without significant costs. We were blessed to uh, have a lot of volunteers, uh, local volunteers who were dedicated to the rebuild of this uh, Shea engine. And they were part and parcel of a mechanical shop uh, with a volunteer by the name of Norm Bumstead, who was instrumental in the rebuild of not only the new water tank, but the entire mechanical portion of the truck sets. We are now six years into this rebuild, having been hampered by many of the unknown challenges that we faced on the way, not the least of which was the COVID scene that affected a number of our employees. But nonetheless, to use the uh, baseball vernacular, I think we're rounding third. Uh, what better artifact to illustrate logging at the turn of the last century than a Shea locomotive. And I'm very hopeful that come next spring, we are able to steam this locomotive and once again enjoy its patronage around the 100 acre forest land that we have here at the BC Forest Discovery Center. Thank you very much.